Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I will be giving 3 tips that's going to help you sell more lures and we're starting right now. <music> Tip number 1. Standing out from the crowd. Alright, standing out of the crowd. What does that mean? I mean by that that you want to do your own thing. You want to stand out of the crowd and don't make any photocopies of something that already exists. Because if you would be painting a really trending pattern that's really going around and a lot of people fish with it, that doesn't mean you're gonna sell a lot. Because always think like this, why would somebody buy my lure and not someone else's? Give yourself a lot of criticism on this subject because if you don't stand out a little bit, people are not going to buy your lure. And there are a lot of lure painters out there that also sell their lures. So if you don't stand out and they don't stand out, someone somewhere will stand out and will be selling the most lures. And that might be because he has a different style, he has a signature style of painting, or he's using some cool colors in there, or he's, he's doing the pattern a little bit different that just makes the bait look more interesting and that's going to make people buy stuff. because. If, let's say, a fire tiger is really hot right now, everybody's fishing fire tiger patterns and everybody loves them, that doesn't mean if you're going to paint a fire tiger pattern, then you're gonna sell your lure. But if you do a different take on your fire tiger pattern, you do it a little bit differently, or you're using this specific blank that, that's hard to come by, that might also make you sell more. It's only that little bit different that makes people buy stuff from you specifically because if there is no specific reason to buy from you you're not gonna sell much that's how it is in this world if you don't stand out they're gonna buy somewhere else because then you need to be really lucky they bump into your lures or you know, onto your Facebook page or wherever you advertise your lures and that somebody wants to buy that specific lure from you but if it's special and it, it draws attention that's a different story. Tip number two, time is money. Now I don't want you to undersell everything or make everything super cheap or sell them at lower prices. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm trying to say with that is if you are spending a lot of time on the lure, you have to price it correctly too. Calculate the hours that you spent on the lure and price it for that because you, you might scare off some customers that are looking for cheap lures, but People who are looking for cheap lures usually don't buy custom lures either. They go to a store and they buy the cheap stuff or they go on to the internet and buy from certain websites the very cheap ones. And that's their choice. That's it's fine. All those lures work as well. It doesn't really matter that much. But if you want something unique, you want something custom painted, you do have to pay the price that's for the hours that's spent on that lure. And you cannot undersell yourself. Don't go too cheap on that because if you're not going to make any profit out of, out of it, even if it's a hobby, if you don't make profit out of it, what's the point in doing it? So if you want to sell more lures, you do want to be not too expensive. But of course, you can put a lot of time in your lures and give it really a signature style. And after a while, you will develop a, a lot of people that have commitment to your lures or really like your style. You create a little bit of a little fan club. Um, and they will buy your lures but if you want to sell really more you have to find a way in to paint really nice patterns but do not put too much time and effort into it finding that sweet spot between a really cool pattern with not too many colors because changing colors with an airbrush is what takes the most of the time away and if you're trying to invent a cool pattern but you're only using three or four colors, that lure is gonna be painted really quickly. And that's gonna save you time. It's gonna make you able to sell your lures for less money, which is also really, really important. So time is money, don't forget that. Try to find that sweet spot between a cool pattern and the amount of time you put into it. And also, what is your goal? Do you really want to make really awesome colors and you want very special lures or do you just want to sell stuff? Does that make you feel good? Because that's fine too. It's okay if you just want to sell stuff because 
it feels good when somebody buys a lure from you, but it also feels really good when you make a lure that you're really, really proud of. So don't lose yourself. Find that sweet spot that you like. Find your signature style. Find what you want to do with your lure painting. You want to go all in and make very, very special creations which take a lot of time and sell them at higher prices and probably sell a little less unless you, you, you did this for years and you have this big fan club out of there and you're really establishing a brand then you might really sell a lot, that happens or you put less effort into it, you just make it a little bit special, a little bit different but it didn't take a lot of time so you can sell them at a good price and you're gonna sell a little bit more it depends on what you want so make up your mind on that and think about time is money. And tip number three, product photography. How you present your lures is super important because you don't have a fishing fair every day of the week around the corner. But there's a better way. We sell through the internet. We use Facebook, Instagram, all those social media. Some use YouTube and promote the lures there. It's all good. It all works. But product presentation is super important especially when we're talking social media we're talking pictures and in order to take a good pictures there are a few things you need to think of and I'm gonna walk you through a few of the steps that I take to try to make a good product picture alright the first thing that you need to think about is your background now I wanna take a picture of this really nice looking lure but as you can see if I hold it in my hand like a lot of people like to take a picture which is fine but look at the background. I got a garbage bag, I got some stuff there. Your attention really quickly draws to what is in the background. There's a lot of stuff to see there. People, a brain is really easily dis distracted. And you want the focus to be on the lure. So make sure your background is not noisy and drawing any attention. Like in this case, it's just a lot of scrap. So make sure you have a decent background. So as you can see, this background is a lot less noisy and the focus actually goes onto the lure. So this would be a lot better picture, just because that background is not drawing too much attention. Let's say you like to photograph your lures on top of your table and you're using something to make the lure stand upright. Well, that's not a problem at all, but this again is a really noisy background. I'm using a box, just a little toolbox with some tools in there and that is really drawing the attention but this problem can be easily solved by just taking a white paper sheet I take a little bit of tape here and there we go now I can zoom in a little there's way too much light turn off the light a little bit and there we go now we got a really nice and decent picture so guys that is it those are my three tips for selling more lures and I hope that you will be selling more lures from now on. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. And see you next time. Bye bye. Today I will be giving. Today. 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 Tip number two. I forgot. Thing. What's the thing? Topic. No. What's the. Now if you want to learn more about product, 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 about product photo photography, come on.